because I know there's four states represented. Um, so Mobile Monday, who's uh, strongly affiliated with the uh, Michigan group uh, that he was talking about, that they are uh, uh, global, uh, and there's there's some great groups, uh, you know, in, in Illinois and, and Chicago is a big Mobile Monday group there. Uh, Ohio, there's Cleveland, and Columbus, and I think a couple others. Uh, so so check out Mobile Monday, if, you know, especially if you're not in Michigan. If you're in Michigan, check out the uh, MTAM group. Uh, very business savvy group, so I highly recommend uh, you get involved if you're doing anything mobile. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, we've uh, we've basically, like like he said, we've organized uh, four different chapters in Michigan, and uh, and I, I right now I'm focused on the Ann Arbor chapter, uh, and then we've got a really great Detroit chapter, and then we get um, uh, uh, Grand Rapids chapter that meets three times or four times a year. And um, so there's a lot going on up here in mobile. Okay, I'm Keith Bourne. I am the lead mobile strategist for Arbor Moon. Um, Got a very interesting job because nobody knows what I do. Um, I tell people all the time. I say I'm a mobile strategist, and they're like, you know, is, is that what? What is that? Is that uh, you know, is that like a, something to do with cars? You're mobile, and um, you know, where does strategy come in? If they finally figure out that it has something to do with, with cell phones or mobile phones, uh, they can they can kind of get that part, but they don't understand where strategy comes in. So I spend a lot of my time. Explain to friends and family, uh, you know what I actually try to do, and it never really gets anywhere. Um, but uh, but that's that's my interesting life here. But we actually at Arbor Moon, we actually have a, a, a division we're starting uh, for mobile strategy because we, we find that it's it's a really important component of of getting involved with mobile. Um, I'll break that into two different parts of this. This is uh, the part about mobile, uh, which Mike actually talk, touched on. Uh, you know, it's it's not just the smartphone. Uh, or mobile phones, uh, there's a whole big world out there. When somebody says mobile, uh, like in the media or the press, they're really putting this big umbrella label on, on hundreds of different technologies, and all of which are, are rapidly uh, moving forward. Uh, many of them can be applied to different components of the enterprise and, uh, and make a real difference. Uh, you know, the, the technology's matured to the point now where it can really make a difference. In, uh, in, in really every aspect of the enterprise. So, so that's, uh, that's you know, exciting. That's, that's basically where, where I am uh, in this field. Um, strategic part is sorting out all of those different technologies, breaking down uh, an organization by all the different things they do, looking to see where mobile can be applied, and figuring out how, uh, you know, how to prioritize the, uh, the different activities you do to implement mobile and what you're doing. So we call that a, a mobile strategy roadmap. And, uh, and I spend a lot of my time helping, uh, helping people to come up with those. Um, so example of, of going through a, a strategy framework, um, I, I've got a framework that I work with. Basically, uh, I look at the different parts of an organization. You've got marketing and sales, uh, uh, operations, things like that. And then I, I look at it from a vertical standpoint and say, you know, obviously in specific verticals, uh, media, community media centers versus healthcare, there's going to be very specific applications within each of those groups. So this is sort of a, a, an example of that. Um, you know, there might be something that for for this you know for this group that helps to reduce the cost of production, uh, cost of video production or or, uh, or show production. Um, whereas you know in healthcare you're, you're talking about lowering uh, patient care costs or, or uh, improving communications with patients and things like that. So so you know you're kind of looking at, at the different. Uh, uh, Components of uh, of the industry, and trying to figure out uh, what what you know where it makes sense. Now, the interesting thing that I find uh, right now, and this might change in the future, but right now, what's going on in a lot of the different industries uh, helps to figure out what what to do in your industry. There's a lot of cross uh, pollinization in terms of concepts and ideas. So you'll see, you know, I'll, I'll see a lot of innovation in say uh, banking, and and then I'll talk to somebody in healthcare, and they'll start saying talking about something. That I'm like, you know what, they're doing something, they figured that out in, in banking, and we can apply it here. And, uh, and so, you know, so, so right now it's kind of nice to be a generalist uh, on all these different industries 
and, and utilize what you're seeing across them to, uh, uh, to apply to this, uh, to, to your specific field. Um, so yeah, these are the, the different um, areas, you know, we could potentially look at. Um, the, uh, so, so, so getting into uh, community media centers, now I've, I've uh, I usually spend a, a quite a few hours going, looking through, uh, you know, what, what, you know, all, all the components of, of, uh, of an organization, what they do and things like that. But I think, uh, you know, just thinking about what, um, what you guys are doing in, in your field, uh, the two areas that jump out at me first are, are uh, basically your media consumption side and your media production side. Uh, and this, you know, pretty typical in, in the, um, in, uh, in anything, in a lot of things that have to do with media, you know, you, you either have the people that are, are are utilizing it, you know, these are the people you're trying to distribute uh, the information out to already have the people that are, are producing it. Um, so let's talk about the consumption side. Um, obviously, this, this is where uh, I think you probably think of first, right, with the, uh, uh, you know, let, let's put together an app that, that will send, you know, that we can, uh, that people can download and they can access uh, the, the, the resources that we put on, on, in other channels like online and, and through uh, cable and things like that, um, and now we we created a new channel. Uh, we can act, you know, and, and give uh, people broader access and, and you know easier access, and this can really improve our, our distribution. Um, this is this is a screenshot of the YouTube uh, app, uh, and they they've really um, you know they, they they've gone through and, and done a good job at figuring out how to how to uh, show. Um, a media library in a, in a fairly certain manner. Um, talking with, with groups in uh, media centers, it's, it's, uh, there, there's an extra component here that I think is an interesting element that can actually improve usability is, is when you're talking about scheduling, you know, like, you know, a show comes out at 3.30, uh, how that can integrate with the app and actually uh, um, uh, add a whole new element of usability. And, uh, and so, so that's something, you know, I think you would add on to something that this would be a good starting point. It's, is with uh, with something like what YouTube did. Um, the uh, on the production side, you know, everybody's got this little media studio, basically media production studio in their you know on, on their uh, belts or in their pockets. You know, that is, these uh, devices are, are getting better every day. Uh, most a lot of the new smartphones have HD cameras on them. Um, they you know th these people are everywhere like. The, the, the opportunity to, uh, to really support the community in a whole new way and actually lower the cost of, of doing that um, and, then, and then enabling more of the community to be able to, uh, to uh, utilize uh, you know, the channels that you already create, I, I think there's, there's a huge opportunity on, on the production side. Um, from a, a, another component of strategy is, uh, I, I think, you know, just uh, and I've seen this, in, in, and again, look at it, different industries, and I've seen this in other industries as well, but where, where you don't have uh, cutthroat competition, um, you'll see it's, it's a lot easier to pull your resources and, uh, and join forces with other similar groups. Uh, you see this a lot in government and universities, um, and, uh, and the concept, I think, you know, here, like let's say you're building an app, um, the, the two main approaches are basically you build an app that is essentially white-labeled, uh, and you, you create it in a way that allows you to switch out the, uh, the branding and the look of the app, and then every group has, you know, has a version of it that, that you only had to pay a, a, you know, a fraction of what it would cost you if you developed it you know, just for your own group. So, so I think uh, this concept of, of pulling resources, you know, when, you're, you know, when you don't have to worry about competition, I mean, you'll never see McDonald's and Burger King get together and, and develop an app together. But, but that's the nice, uh, the nice thing about your industries. You don't have to worry about uh, you know trying to you know kill each other in, in the mobile field. Um, the other concept is is actually you know kind of crossing borders. I know this. I'm not sure you know which which groups have different missions and, and might might have you know might be more tuned to this concept. But if, if it fits your mission, um, you know actually broadening the uh, the access you know access to all the different content you have across the different uh, uh, media centers is another way to go. Um, but, but those are like the two main strategies we see uh, when, when people start to pull resources. And you can even do both. Um, but uh, you know, it's a great way to save money and get a lot more out of what you're spending. Um, tips, uh, just in general, 
uh, and, I, and I think I can kind of pound on this, uh, is just, you know, open your minds to all the different things that are, are in the mobile uh, world for what you guys do. Uh, it's not just the phones and the apps. There's, there's so much more out there um, that, that you can utilize and actually, you know, really improve uh, whatever it is that you're, you're trying to do, whether it's internal within your company, just, you know, improving uh, your, your operations or even external, reaching out to people, improving distribution. There's, there's a, there's a lot of different technologies that can be applied and, 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 uh, and be useful. So, um, you know, keep, keep an open mind to, to all those different things. Uh, one of the mistakes I see a lot of people making is, is that they think, okay, I'm going to dabble in, in mobile, I'm going to do this one little thing, and I'm going to understand everything that, that is in mobile. Uh, you know, for example, with, with what I was talking about with the consumption and production, if you, if you produce that, that app that is, uh, you know, meant to distribute a video through a new channel, that's really not going to tell you anything about supporting people in their production uh, through an app that sends you know, video back to the uh, studio or anything like that. Uh, those are two very different parts uh, that you're, you're hitting there. So uh, a lot of people will think, okay, I'm doing this one. It's going to help me understand everything else. And, and, uh, and unfortunately, that's not the case. So, so we try to say, you know, I think it is you know, important to be cautious and don't just jump into everything. But at the same time, you, know, you want to prioritize what you're looking at and, and make sure that you're your roadmap is in place. You might find that there's something that's going to take 18 months to, to, to develop, but in 18 months it's going to be the highest priority, so you want to start working on that over something that may be your second priority now. Um, and then uh, talk to your users. Uh, this is the biggest mistake I see, and it, and it, and it, it racks my brain because I, mean, I think it's the most obvious thing. Uh, you know, in, in, in the, the company that I work with, uh, sometimes we work on different parts of, a, of, of the uh, of the, the mobile strategy, and, and we're, we're working with an auto company, I don't know, they'll remain nameless, but, uh, but they work with truck drivers, and they never talk to a truck driver for this app that they developed. And so they're doing all these great things, it's marketing people that are, you know, very good at what they do, but they have like a whole huge component that's very social media oriented, and, and if you talk to some of the people that they're serving, they don't even use Twitter. So there, there, there's a real disconnect there, you guys got to talk to your users and really get to understand you know, how they're going to use the thing. And, and, and actually, I find that the, 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 uh, the simplest and cost, most cost-effective way is, is just sitting down with what we call, you know, paper-based testing. And, and you, uh, there's some very uh, nice software tools out there that allow you to generate these, these tests very quickly and easily. Uh, uh, Basalmic's one of them. I don't know if you guys uh, are familiar with the software out there. But, but uh, it, it generates these paper-based tests and you'll, you'll, you can even like create like a, what looks like a little cell phone in a, in a cardboard box and, and have a user sit there and, and, and try to do a task or, or just leave it up to them to what they want to do. And you'll see something like they'll sit there and they'll look at it and they'll pause for a moment. And that, that tells you something right there. They're looking for something, they're not getting it. And if for an interface that probably only has three or four elements in it, if even one of those elements isn't working properly, your, your app's a failure. So, so, you know, you might say, okay, you know, what is it that you're looking for? Well, I was looking for the go button, all I see is start. Or I was looking for the start button, and I, all I see is go. And I just didn't get that that, you know, meant that. And, and there's, like, little realizations you'll have uh, if you go through this. And if you do it before you go to code, before you do anything else uh, and spend a lot of money, you'll save a lot of money, save a lot of time, and you won't spend your wheels nearly, nearly as much. So, uh, you know, so this is one I, I continue to, uh, to harp on, you know, and... and I see a lot of uh, people skip over this step, but it's, it's probably the most crucial thing for, for doing these, uh, these projects cost effectively in, in the most intelligent way. So that's it. Uh, that's my presentation. Uh, I, I'm really excited for everybody that, that's getting to mobile with this group. I think, I think what you guys can do with mobile is very exciting. Um, you know, I've talked to the, the local groups here in, in the area, and, uh, and I think you know, the sky's the limit for, for how you can serve your markets uh, with mobile. You know, like, like Mike said, this, this is the way everything's going, and uh, you, have, uh, you have a lot of opportunities. So, uh, so uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing all the great things you guys come up with. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions. I look forward to answering them. Thank you.